Amen. Welcome everybody. Everybody's coming in. Boy, a lot of a lot of people are late today, but they'll get here. Hallelujah, right? So let's open in prayer and ask God's blessing. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be very glad in it. So Father, we just we just we just want to come to you and trust you. God, that you will get all the praise and glory from our hearts today. May this be a sanctuary for your presence, for your purpose, and God, that we will simply give you it all this hour, hour and a half in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. Let's, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Those who can stand, would you please stand for worship? Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. When the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. When the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are. Into the fullness of His love, for the Spirit is here. Let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Bring all of your burdens. Bring all of your scars. Grace is waiting for you. Hands like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. When the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. When the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are. Into the fullness of His love, for the Spirit is here. Let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Yeah. Chains will fall. Shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Life made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Change will fall, prisons shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Life made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Wait has been 
lifted Grace is waiting Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is waiting Dance like the weight has been lifted Grace is Here is my heart, 
Lord, you are holy, and there is no one else like you. So, Lord, this morning, we want to give you the praise and the honor and the glory that you deserve. Lord, forgive us if we've given that away to somebody else or something else, something that didn't deserve it. But, Lord, you do. And so this morning, we give you, we give you praise and glory. generations falling down and worship sing the song of ages to the Lamb all who have gone before us and all who would believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions, all power and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, holy, oh creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy If you've been forgiven and if you've been redeemed, sing the song forever to the Lamb. If you walk in freedom and if you bear His name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. We'll sing the song forever and amen. Your name is the highest, your name. It's the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all power and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you will let Amen. We're going to anoint with oil at this time. Praise God. And uh, those that have a need in body, mind, or spirit, come at this time. If you want personal prayer, simply stay up around the altar. If you just want to be anointed and go back to your seat, you have that option. So come at this time.
verse 2. Father, I love you. Come satisfy the longing in my heart. Fill me, fill me, overwhelm me. Until
there is. Amen. Praise God. As we go to prayer this morning, those of you that uh, uh, got the emails and were here at the car show Wednesday, I shared the testimony about my father-in-law who had a heart aneurysm burst at about 3.15 the other day. And by the time he was on the operating table in Cleveland Clinic, it was already 7 o'clock. And he lived through it. And he was communicating with the doctor right up to the moment that the surgery started. And he's, um, he, he's had some major operations, and he's, um, he's, he's holding his own. Hallelujah. So that's Amen. praise God. Amen. And uh, we have a gal, a friend of our ministry here, Lori Miller. She's a best friend of Stacy Marinelli. And Stacy is with her in Pittsburgh this morning because as we are speaking, uh, her friend is receiving a double lung transplant. That's hard to believe they can even do that. So we're going to go to prayer for that. Ike also has some needs in his body. I had a wonderful visit with him the other day. He wants everybody in the church to, to know, to say hello. He misses everyone, but uh, his health issues are compounding, but he's, he's encouraged. 91 years old, and the guy, he's amazing. He's one of the youth group. Hallelujah, you know? So uh, remember that Sunday when we all shouted, hi, Ike? Oh, man, let me tell you, that, that made his month. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, why don't we say hi to Ike again real loud, okay? Because it, it picked up really well on our thing. So everybody say, hi, Ike. Oh, <laughs> Mel took his, his, his ear, ear thing off. Hallelujah, man. Praise God. Ike, we love you. So let's go to prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we, we lift up this Lori, and, and it's just hard to imagine. And I know that in order for her to receive that, that lung transplant that someone far younger, I understand, died. So there's such sadness in one way, and yet it's just a miracle, God, that, that we're able to see these things happen even in our day. So, God, we give you the praise and glory because I believe all genius, even medically, comes from you. And I believe, God, we ask for Lori in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity. My father-in-law as well at Cleveland Clinic Father, as I took the vent out last night, he's able to talk. So, God, we ask, Lord, you brought him through something that, that is amazing because usually people don't have heart aneurysms and live through them. And, God, he is still here. So, Father, we just ask in Jesus' name that you, you just multiply that healing virtue to his body. We thank you and praise you for the wisdom that you've given that team there. They're amazing. Every person we've dealt with has just been off the charts, amazingly kind to us and communicating. And God, we just ask for your will to be done. And Father, throughout this sanctuary, God, you know the needs on every heart. Father, we, we come to the house of the Lord with our loads, with our heaviness. I came with some this morning as well. So Father, we, we pray right now, God, that we're just going to we're just going to surrender those things to you right now. There's stuff that we cannot change. There's nothing in our power to change some of the circumstances around our life. But God, you can change the atmosphere around the circumstance. So God, we pray for that atmosphere of faith to grab hold around us even now so that we would understand that God, it's it's. The same old story, Lord, when you told the apostles, let's go to the other side. The storm was not going to prevent that boat from making it where Christ Jesus said, it is going. They didn't even need to wake you up to calm the storm. They could have just held on for dear life. And they'd have made it because, Lord, you already said where we're going. And God, we are convinced today that you have already spoken to us. You've already convinced us where we are going. So God, help us to hold on. And Lord, we, we praise you and thank you because the Bible says that you've given us authority over demons and scorpions and, 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 and anything of the enemy. So Father, in the name of Jesus, that discouragement that 
that grabs us and holds on and latches on like, like tar on, on the bottom of a shoe. Father, we pray for that tar remover right now in Jesus' name. That, God, that we will walk in faith. It doesn't mean that we'll be giddy. It doesn't mean we'll even be happy. It simply means we will remain faithful to the task at hand. And if it's nothing more than believing you today through a terrible circumstance, a trial, a heartache, then, Father, that is enough. Your grace is sufficient for us today. And, God, I thank you and praise you, for I am surrounded in this, in this sanctuary, God, by people that, that uh, Lord, they've sojourned, they've, they've fought some fights. And, God, we thank you for the victory in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. And Lord, this July 4th, we pray that Americans will be reminded of the beauty of our freedom and, and our liberty. Help us, God, as a nation to return back to you. And Father, if there's going to be a revival, we want, we want in on it. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to be, we want to be first in line. Hallelujah. <laughs> we want to be in the mosh pit of whatever you're doing, Lord, of in your presence. We don't want to be somewhere in the back, close to the door. We want to be up front and attentive to your purpose, to your presence, and to your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. Oh, well, speaking of that, hallelujah. Janelle, come on up here. Janelle was our, many of you don't know Janelle. Janelle was our youth pastor over 20 years ago, right? About 20 years 20 years, and a lot's happened. Her and her husband went over to Freedom when, they, when we planted the church over there, and her husband has been in the worship team ever since, yep. right? Still there, and uh, she's got some exciting things. I understand we have a, you can introduce yep. the video. And stuff. Yeah, I'll introduce the video. Uh, it's good to see some faces that are familiar to me. Um, I'm not a blonde anymore, so I know that some of you guys, I was a blonde all the entire time I was here. So some of you took a double look. This is, this is age. Blonde doesn't work uh, with my skin tone anymore. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and we're, we're going to start this video uh, in a second. I just want to thank Pastor Jim for inviting me here. This is like coming home. So I, uh, I got saved here. Uh, I got baptized here. I got filled with the Holy Spirit here. I got married here. And I almost had my daughter at a prayer breakfast here. <laughs> I left the prayer breakfast, and about eight hours, nine hours later, I had my little girl. So almost, almost gave birth here. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, show the video and then talk just a few minutes about it. Northeast Ohio, are you ready to make a difference in someone's life? Join us for the Hope Delivered event in collaboration with Convoy of Hope on August 26th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Lake County Fairgrounds in Northeast Ohio. We're excited to provide a wide range of services to those in need, including distribution of 35,000 pounds of free groceries, haircuts, assisting signing up for veterans benefits and Medicare, a job fair, substance abuse, and mental health resources with live music, re-entry services and a kid zone. With so many services available, we're sure there's something for everyone at the Hope Delivered event in collaboration with Convoy of Hope. Whether you're looking to make a positive impact in your community or are in need of some assistance, we welcome you to come and join and be a part of this incredible day. So mark your calendars for August 26th and get involved. Volunteers are needed. Your volunteer participation can make a huge difference in someone's life. Don't miss out on this opportunity to give back and volunteer to help those in need. The Hope Delivered event in collaboration with Convoy of Hope. See you there from 10 to 4 p.m. at the Lake County Fairgrounds, August 26th. We have everything but that kitty swing. <laughs> we don't have the swing, but we do have everything else. So just to go back, a friend of mine and myself, we have such a, a passion to reach the lost. Why? Because I was lost, and I remember it was the little things uh, that mattered. Uh, you know, the thing that really got me thinking about God because I thought I was an atheist, but then I realized I was mad at him. So that's a good good thing, right? You can't be mad at something you don't believe in. So uh, that kind of was my defining moment. 
And um, when I came to this church, I felt very uh, welcomed where I was not before because I was an unwed mother. So back that many years ago, there was uh, quite a stigma there. And I ended up getting saved here. And it was through messages and through love. But somebody put a bag of groceries outside my door to check for an electric bill as a single mom. And that was like the game changer. And I've never, uh, never have forgotten about that. And that opened me up to hear the gospel. And so it's the little things that you guys do. Uh, just a word of encouragement. I only came here because there was a nursery. So if we have any kind of nursery workers or, you know, people that clean the church or thing, you know, you think that that job doesn't matter. It, it does. It adds to the kingdom. Um, and so we have such a heart for, for the lost. And so we started this out and uh, we rented out 20% of the fairgrounds and it grew. And then we rented out 50% of the fairgrounds and then it grew. And now we have 100% of the fairgrounds. So our budget went from 20,000 to 60,000. Uh, I'll be happy to know that we've raised about 54. Uh, and that's all God. And so we have t-shirts out there if anybody um, would like to purchase any that goes toward that. So uh, this is the thing. Uh, first of all, we, we really um, would love to have you guys interceding for us as we drew a line in the sand on something and all the government agencies for mental health pulled out uh, of this, but we know that God is going to, um, is going to supply. Um, and we were, we were under great attack and had to get lawyers and things, but God is good. Uh, and, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, we need your support in prayer and volunteer. And it's not just meeting the needs of those that are hurting and broken. We want the churches to unite. I know that we've been trying to get traction for years and years and years. We are one church. Lakeshore isn't Lakeshore and freedom isn't freedom. And whatever churches in Lake County are just, not, we are one church church and and this is a, and we just want to begin to unite and and to to help each other and to lift each other up we really would love for you to be a part of this we put uh, a flyer out front with all of the dates we really need help in the prayer tent uh, we have put restrictions on it uh, because in this day and age a person calling themselves a Christian isn't necessarily a Christian we uh, the one smart thing that the Lord laid on our heart is to have a pastoral board so this has been completely covered by a pastoral board we meet once a month we're under their covering uh, every decision we've made have been brought to them and has been covered in prayer so you have to come to two meetings to be in the prayer tent there's no walk-ons uh, you will have to fill out a statement of faith and attend two meetings so that you can pray with each other. We only have four meetings left. We've been doing this since November. So they are on Mondays. Everything is out uh, out there. Um, so we would love to have you there. We also have same-day volunteer options. You can just walk on and help with the groceries or with the setup and clean up and that kind of thing. Uh, thankfully, um, my... my uh, my co-founder of the Hope Delivered um, <laughs> is young and computer savvy. So praise God for that. She's been teaching me stuff. But we actually have a website uh, for the event. So you can just go right on there and sign up right there. You don't have to do the paper forms if you don't want to. Um, but our heart is really to unite the church. And the revival pastor was talking about um, could happen that day. You don't want to miss it because I had someone from... Uh, there, there is possible uh, protests that may happen because of the line that we drew, whatever that looks like. And somebody, uh, a, a church asked us it might be good to, to uh, cancel. <laughs> and I said, this is my line. This is God's line. Uh, we're not, we're not going to cancel. And then the person said something very profound. What if it turns out that at the fairgrounds, it's all Christian? I said, I would call that a revival. You know, so either way, <laughs> either way, I believe that God is going to move. And we would love to have you be a part of it. Um, and he is just really growing this. We have Ride for Life. So there's going to be a motorcycle stunt group it's preaching the gospel. The kid zone is going to be gigantic. We have three bands playing. One is uh, Pastor Jim's son, Chris's band, will be playing. 
Deepwood is coming. They have Deepwood dancers. They're going to they're going to be dancing and it's amazing how we have all this community involvement. It's going to be like nothing uh, you ever seen before, but it's all glory to God. He's the one that's orchestrated it. He's the one that has helped us. So, we'll be out at the table after service if you have any questions. We have t-shirts for sale and we also have flyers. Why don't we agree? Let's just agree. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we know that every church, and I know how this is, it's just, we're kind of just so connected to what we do, and that's good, because you've given us things to do, but God, there's a, there's a much bigger glove, than, and we're, Lakeshore is simply one-tenth one of one finger in the glove of this community. So God, we ask for that glove, both gloves of this community. We ask, God, that you cover uh, this event, Lord, with your presence, with your power. We pray, God, that, that people are just going to experience the love of God. That, Lord, that there's good, that line in the sand that she speaks of, let there be a, a literal sense of your presence on the property. That when people come, they will... They'll begin to weep. They'll be sensitive. Yes. They'll be open to receiving not only free groceries and services, but, God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, God, we pray that, that uh, in spite of the obstacles and the opposition, Father, we, we pray, Lord, that, that I just remind me of that scripture that no weapon formed against you will prosper. And God, we're going there to minister, to love people. That will not be denied. They will be loved. And God, this will be more than successful. It will give you glory. And I give you the praise and glory for uh, Janelle and all that you've done in her life over the years through the jails uh, ministry. And my daughter-in-law works with her up at Lake County Jail holding services all these years. And we just give you the praise and glory for just the places, God, that you find to minister. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, you find the nooks, the crannies, the, the spots that no one else sees, but God, you see it. And I want to thank you and praise you. So bless my sister and God, just uh, and charge her vision. Uh, just, Lord, just give her joy in her heart. Give her an excitement. Have her, have, let her have trouble sleeping not thinking about the problems, but the joy of serving the Lord in this capacity. This is, this is a, it's a big deal. And God, we thank you. You are the God of the big deal. Hallelujah. <laughs> How do we know? Because you sent your son to die on the cross for us. That was a big deal. And Father, the communication of your grace to the nations is a big deal. So God, we thank you and we praise you that you are able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. How's everybody doing? Well, it's a holiday weekend. A lot of members are missing, but we're, gl we're glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Hallelujah. I love church without you, but it's more fun having it with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a lot of stuff coming up. Bible study on Wednesday is canceled until July 12th, so a week from this Wednesday, we will be back in operation from 11 to 12.30 on Wednesdays. After 20 years, finally, finally after 20 years, the Lakeshore Assembly Motorsports shirts will be vacated. Are you ready for the new Motorsports staff shirt? Okay. Isn't that cool? Hallelujah. So we'll have the sign-up sheet for that next week. Uh, the car show last Wednesday was unbelievable. The property was covered with cars and people. It was unbelievable. How many were able to make it to the show? 
Amen. A lot of you, a lot of you helped. I want to say thanks to all the members of the staff that were here. All hands were on deck, and we were a little overwhelmed. We we forgot what it was like to do like a big show. We really kind of forgot. You know, we were used to doing the ones with 40, 60, 70 cars. We had about 150, 40, 50 cars, uh, hundreds of people. We had at least 200 guests here besides staff and members of the church. And praise God, we were able to raise $1,000 for missions. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> praise God. Our next car show, if you want to get the car show uh, sheet out, is going to be on July 11th, Tuesday night. That's going to be our outreach car club, the North Coast Mustang and All Ford Club. And uh, uh, sign-up sheets are coming for that. Praise God. And believe it or not, after 10 years, we're also, I just designed a new shirt for the Mustang Club as well. Check this out. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'll have a sign-up sheet in, the, in a few weeks for that. We're not worried about getting that out right away. Any member of the church that's going to help staff that event, in other words, if you're going to help cook, uh, park, if you're going to help uh, um, in any way, shape, or form, uh, you're, not, you're not a member of the club per se owning a car, but you're helping serve the food, you're helping prepare the food, then I want you to have shirts as well. So every member of the church that's going to be at those smaller car shows for the Mustang Club I want you guys to have a shirt as well. It'll look cool when they go through the line and everybody has matching shirts. It's going to be cool. Today, right after the service, Debbie Seal is having a memorial lunch in memory of her husband, Bob. We loved Bob and uh, knew him, and he was a right-hand man here in our motorsports ministry. It's going to be immediately after in the fellowship hall, and uh, there's definitely room for extra people, right? Amen. So if anybody wants to stay and have a, a quick lunch with us, in memory of Bob, you are more than invited. The summer is so exciting because we have all these outreaches going on, and uh, the, that's what the summer's for. It's for outreach. Hallelujah. So at this time, let's give a warm welcome to Lisa Heffa. <laughs> She's going to talk about the Barnyard Blast. What is the Barnyard Blast? Um. We are ready to sort of kick this thing off. I just have had a lot going on. So, uh, so we're getting closer. Um, the sign-up form is online now. Uh, if anyone asks you, you know, hey, you go to that church and I see something, you know, you can direct them to the church website. Um, they can call the church phone number, and Lisa will forward that information to me. Um, they can also email Lisa's new email that she... Okay, yeah, it's kindergarten through fifth grade. So it's entering kindergarten through entering fifth grade. Um, so you can email Lisa and then she'll get me the information and I'll make sure to contact people. So please reach out if you see people. Um, Lisa has some flyers that she can print out and give to you. Um, the form is online to sign up. We do need people to sign up online because um, we do need some like emergency contact information for parents because we are not requiring them to be here. Um, so we do need help with that still. So next Sunday, I'm going to have a brief meeting right after church. So if you are going to help in any way that day, we really need helpers. So far, I've only had about 10 people come up to me, um, you know, since my first announcement back in January. And we are really going to need far more than that, probably three or four times that to help with everything. So if you can please um, stay after church next Sunday, if you can help in any way. We have our teachers down uh, so I have teachers for every class, but I do need classroom helpers. I need people to do games, um, the craft. So I, there are lots of ways you can help. And then, of course, with the shopping, um, with the clothes and stuff afterwards. So if you can please help with that. And then this Tuesday is July 4th. I'm not sure if any of you are aware of the annual July 4th parade in the Headlands. Um, but thought that was um, a good opportunity to reach tons of kids so we are going to participate in that, and we're going to pass out flyers. And I bought some of these uh, rubber band things, and they have a Bible verse on them about freedom. And we're going to throw candy, too. So if you are willing and able and you'd like to help march with that and pass out flyers, you can meet at my house at 11 a.m., and then we'll go over to the start of the parade. And it's not very long. It would be done probably by 1.30 um, what would you guess? Maybe like it's a mile walk. Maybe it's a mile. 
It, it's not real long, but it, it's slow because it is a parade. So if you want to do that, you can see me after service. Um, Lisa did send out a note with my address and my phone number if you would need that. So um, just be praying about that. Um, you know, uh, I think we're all set, but we want lots of kids to come. We're hoping we can get 50 kids and so um, we can minister to them. So thank you. Amen, Lisa. Praise God. So every, every week we'll be getting you information and I, I want to volunteer to help at lunch. I want to be a lunch aide. Okay, amen. All right, this Wednesday, five, once a month, we're doing the men's group during the summer. This week, back by popular demand, Leslie's famous meatloaf dinner. Okay, yeah, it was good. And uh, they've got some other side dishes. It's going to be fun. So men, this Wednesday, this Wednesday, once a month, we're doing the men's group. We usually do it twice a month, but because of the car show schedule, we're only doing it once a month. And it's in the fellowship hall. So we're going to have a blast this Wednesday. Sign-up sheets are coming. Well, as you know, uh, the 4th of July is upon us. And uh, praise God for that. Praise God that we have a, a day to remember. Um, liberty and freedom, that's what it's all about. Hallelujah. Amen. And all through human history, people have wanted to be free. And it feels like that we want to be free more now than we have in a whole long time. Uh, we feel the press of culture uh, pressing in on us and, and really constraining the church, constraining the body of Christ, constraining people who have um, any common sense. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like when you have a, a, a woman was just placed by the president on the Supreme Court a few months ago, and when she came before the Senate, they asked her multiple times, what is a woman? And she could not she could not answer the question. And she will be making decisions about thousands of things that are concerning whether or not men are men and women are women. When you don't even know what a woman is and you're put on the Supreme Court, we got a problem, okay? So we live in a very strange time. And yet, we need to remember our history a little bit because July 4th, 1776, and and we know that, that the Declaration of Independence was signed and the United States basically officially that day became a nation and that's why we celebrate the 4th of July. And praise God because the, the idea, the model was that it was one nation under God. Now our picture that every, all our forefathers were on fire Christian zealots is, is absolutely incorrect but they were respecting to the idea that the foundation of truth and morality came from the Bible. The Bible, in fact, to, to be on the, the original Supreme Court, did you know that you had to believe in, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, or you won't even considered to be on the Supreme Court? Do you understand that the early decisions of, of the Supreme Court, many times the quotations from Scripture were 60, 70% of, of the, um, uh, the fullness of the decisions that were being made. Now it is as if to be on the Supreme Court, you have to almost make a vow that you will not believe in God. You will not believe in the authority of Scripture. You will not in any way, shape, or form give any credence to the foundational history of our nation. However, as bad as that is, we saw three decisions this week from the Supreme Court, all three, which were excellent, so God is still moving, hallelujah. And, 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 and I know you can say, well, wait a minute, uh, the Supreme Court always goes back and forth and whatever, the political thing. But you need to understand that, that thank God, there's people on, on the court who respect some idea that scripture and that belief in God is still something. Uh, uh, the, the big, dis really, the, in my opinion, a really big decision was the freedom of speech one with uh, uh, an internet producer who somebody came to them and said, we want you to make an internet uh, site for us uh, concerning same-sex marriage. And they said, I can't do that. I, <laughs> that is really outside of my moral, I have a moral dilemma with that. And of course, they were sued, and the Supreme Court found in favor of, 
uh, the guy with the computer program, okay, uh, that business, that if this is truly against his religion and against his moral fabric, that, that this cannot be imposed. And that's a very important decision. And that one decision is going to stall and push back so much of the avalanche that has been coming against uh, the church and <clears throat> basically our, our civil liberties. So some, some good things are in the offing because of, of those decisions. So we have to give, we have to see that. And the pendulum swings back and forth and, and we know that it has swung so far in the wrong direction. Trust me when I tell you the force of the pendulum coming in the other direction. Uh, is, is, is amazing. We, we feel isolated because that's what the press does. It's, that's what they want to make you feel like. Like we're the only people in the country that feel this way. And I'm pretty convinced we're not the only ones. Amen? Hallelujah. In fact, I believe there's tens and tens and tens and tens of millions who, if they don't share completely our views, they definitely want to see the freedom of, of, of speech and the freedom and the maintaining uh, the, the religious framework that we've enjoyed in our nation. So I still believe there could be a, one nation under God. Hallelujah. Uh, the Statue of Liberty. And this is a good time to introduce to you on September 9th, 2023, we're going to have our second annual Judeo-Christian rally. How many were at that rally last year? Okay, this year, I really pray that every member of our church comes to this rally. We're going to have a lot of special speakers. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. We take over the Painesville Park. We pro pr preach the gospel. It's awesome, as I shared. I remember when I was newly saved that I had like a, a, a vision one night. And I don't think the vision was from the Lord, but I, I just like to lay around and think of crazy things. And I, was, I remember I was in the park in this, 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 this vision, and I was preaching the gospel, and I could hear the gospel ricocheting off the buildings in downtown Painesville. Last year, I experienced that. When I preached the gospel at that event, I could literally hear the echo of the gospel in the, in the, coming off the buildings in downtown Painesville. Wow, and, and, and I totally forgot about how I used to lay in bed at night and thinking about, wow, wouldn't it be cool to preach in the park and to hear the gospel? And the Lord showed me, said, that's already come to pass, hallelujah. So I hope that you guys will, will come with me that day. Psalms 33, 12 is a very familiar scripture for many of you. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Now to be completely fair, the scripture is, is really purposely given to the Jew. But we need to understand that any people, I believe in any nation, can call out to the Lord. We, we are not, uh, we're not the only uh, stick, uh, we're not the only piece of wood in the fire, hallelujah. I, I, I believe in American exceptionalism, but I also believe that, that people calling out in any nation in the, in the world, they're allowed to. Uh, we are not better than anybody. The gospel is free to all. So we need, we need to be careful with that. We don't want harm to come to other nations. We want other nations to come to the Lord uh, to, to any degree that they will. And, and we know that there are many other nations. Uh, uh, Arban, the, um, the um, um, president of, of um, uh, Hungary, uh, man, this guy, he's, he's, he's unbelievable. And he's basically declared that, as far as he's concerned, Hungary is under the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's multiple nations in, in, in Africa. Talk to our missionaries where the, the presidents and the prime ministers have, have basically said that we are calling upon uh, the holy God of Israel, hallelujah, to, to bless us. So thank God that stuff's happening in the world. And remember, you're not allowed to hear this. The news is not going to tell you that. They're going to talk about how terrible it is that they are uh, misrepresenting. They'll pick out some minority because by saying something about their faith in God, hallelujah, praise God. Thank God for the boldness that leaders in the world actually have and they're putting up with the scorn and the derision simply because they're stating a fact. Hallelujah. The fact is, God is God, and politicians come and go, but the Lord, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
And, and it's not who sits in the White House, it's who, it's, it's who sits on the throne of grace. Hallelujah. And our nation's foundation, though, is very unique compared to any other. We see John Adams, and here's what he said. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. Wow. But listen what he said next. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. And I think we see that in our culture. Like, how can this work if there is not the basic fundamental understanding of God? If there is not the basic respect for moral authority, the ultimate moral authority being God. And, and we see that in our culture, it's who's, who's ever screams the loudest, they're the ones that's, they're going to get the YouTube video. They're the one that's going to be on the news. You know, the person mad in front of a, a concert, you know, 14 people. Look, if they changed the name of the Cleveland Indians to the Guardians, they're still the tribe to me. I'm never calling them the Guardians, okay? Because there's 14 people out there that said that it was offensive, okay? And, and here you name the team after you name the team, you call them the Cleveland Indians because the guy who it's named after, they're honoring him. This wasn't to slam him. This wasn't because they were prejudiced. It was to honor him. And that's not good enough. And we had to change the name, and now we got some stupid guard, something by a bridge. I mean, it's ridiculous. And this is the type of stuff that's going on. But thank God... But, but it's kind of scary because he said it is only for a moral and religious people. And we can see that, that it is impossible to pass enough laws to control people's behavior. Right now in the U.S. there are over 2 million laws in the books, collectively. If you take every jurisdiction, every town, every city, every hamlet, there is over 2 million laws in the books. And when you watch the news, you say to yourself, wow, we need another million. <laughs> West Coast, you can walk into a C CV. I saw a guy, he had his phone, and he was literally, he had a cart, and he was putting things in the cart, and, and he was keeping track of how much he was stealing because he didn't want to steal more than $940 worth because then they'd call the cops. You think I'm joking? Look it up. Businesses, this, that one, was it, uh, I'm trying to remember what, what store it was. When you walk in, everything's behind glass, everything's locked up. Walgreens, yeah, Walgreens, because they had so much theft. Well, why are people just stealing like that? Well, one is because when you vote stupid people in, they make stupid rules, like you can, you can steal $940 worth of stuff. I think, you know, I thank God for Lake County because, trust me, if somebody walked out with a pack of gum and, it was, and they didn't pay for it, they're going to be arrested. And that's the way it should be. So that if somebody thinks they're going to walk in and take $500 worth, they're really going to be in trouble. But in, the, but in the West Coast, the way the government is out there, they, they couldn't care less about the business owners. And I say that to understand because we're dealing with a moral and religious situation. Because there is no, no moral fabric if, in fact, the God and the word of God is completely dishonored and removed from the process of the civility of a community. When a community decides that it no longer honors and no longer will honor the authority of God and scripture, then you end up with what you end up with. And to be honest with you, the, the loudest group often then will, will be able to take over because everybody will be um, uh, humiliated into submission to, to their anger and their hostility and CNN, okay? So you need to understand that we need a moral and, and religious uprising by virtue of the Holy Spirit of God. Only a revival to where hearts are changed uh, uh, can pull this off. Hen Patrick Henry said, with prayer and reliance on divine providence. This is the last paragraph, by the way, in the Constitution. With prayer of reliance on divine providence. There it is. That's what he said. We mutually pledged each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. He called upon 
God. Hallelujah. And, and, and nobody in that culture at that time had a problem with that. You know, if you were to take the very month, I think it was May of 1963, when they took prayer and Bible reading out of schools, every social measurable thing started to go up, literally within months. Every rotten thing that happens in our culture, it started to go up. If, if, if you can look on the internet and find graphs that show every single thing going wrong in our society, it literally blasted off in the mid-60s. Because you see, and you know, yeah, but the kids, they weren't even listening when they, yeah, but there was at least that idea that the authority of scripture, it's, it's fascinating how when you start, you, you start this country called the United States of America, and for a hundred something years, kids are, are reading their Bible every morning, and then the Supreme Court comes out and says, that's against the Constitution. Well, wait a minute, why wasn't it against the Constitution for the first hundred something years of, of our nation? Wouldn't you think the founders would have had a problem with it back then when they, when they shaped these documents? Isn't it amazing? It's unconstitutional for there to be a Christian, you know. It, it, so then, then the idea was, okay, yeah, well, we're signaling out Christianity. Well, that's, that's, that's I can't help it because whether we like it or not, 97 to 99% of the framers of the Constitution believed in some way, shape in, in the gospel. And even the ones that didn't, they absolutely subscribed to the idea of the moral authority of, of Scripture. So we've had freedom fighters all through history, and thank God. How many, how many know what this picture is? February 23rd, 1945, six American soldiers raised the American flag. Pat, if you want to come back. On the summit of Mount Sarabachi on Iwo Jima, which was an island, it was a 36-day battle. Are you ready for this? It, this was the first territory, Japanese territory, that would then be occupied, occupied by United States forces. 7,000 men were killed in those battles. 7,000 thousand men so we need to understand guys sometimes the battles I don't even think we've got the stomach for headlines like that I think we, we you know most of us were old enough so that we even those of you that were alive when perhaps towards the end of the war and stuff like that we have no idea what it would be like if every single day they said 750 troops were killed today tomorrow 435 to, the next day, 275, the next day, 450. I don't think we mentally could even comprehend such a thing. And yet during the war, every single headline was like that. And praise God, there was another freedom fighter that fought nearly 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. And I, and I praise God for freedom fighters that put that flag up, but I praise God for the one that carried the cross. Hallelujah. Because it was Jesus, hallelujah. It was Jesus who suffered, died, was buried, but he rose again, hallelujah, who secured for us that freedom and that liberty. And without that freedom and liberty, the very foundation of our nation would not have come to be, hallelujah. Because the foundation of our nation was so immersed in, in the concepts of, of Judeo-Christian thought that without the Judeo-Christian thought, we would not be sitting here today this nation would not be having and have experienced the freedom that we have for hundreds of years. And even as bad as it feels like it's getting, we are still uh, an easy street compared to 97% of the rest of the world. Amen? Do we understand that? No matter what you think you're losing, you need to still appreciate what we still have. Hallelujah. Amen? Praise God. 1 Peter 1, 19 and 20 says, But with the precious blood of Christ... A lamb without blemish or defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for you. Thank God that the Lord Jesus Christ suffered for us. Now in Galatians 5.1, and we already sung some songs, we're going to close 
with a song about freedom again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Praise God for people that get saved. Uh, Janelle, I, I think I told you this, but uh, shortly before Janelle visited the church, you worked at Burger King in Painville. And I remember one time going in, and she waited on me. I had no idea who she was. And I remember I went and I sat down, and I was thinking about her because you, you looked like, I don't know if somebody manhandled you the night before or what, but you did not. You looked bad. You sounded bad. You were polite to me, but you could, you were, I could just tell you were going through some bad stuff. And I remember sitting there with my cup of coffee and I prayed. I said, God, I don't know who that girl is, but touch her. And a few months later, she walked in this church, and gave her life to Christ, and now she's leading other people that experienced abuse, other people that experienced. The, 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 all the, the stuff that life was throwing at you at that time. And we saw her change, hallelujah, by the liberty of Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about, hallelujah. And not again with the yoke of bondage, hallelujah. We're set free, praise God. We're set free. We're set free, hallelujah. We're set free, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise God. Why don't we stand as we give God praise as we close with this song? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Lift your eyes to the heavens, there is freedom. Lift your eyes to heaven, there is freedom.
praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the freedom that we have and we experience in your grace. And God, we thank you when we're not experiencing that freedom that we still have that freedom. Learned a long time ago, Lord, that if how I feel a certain day is whether or not I, I have the freedom in Christ, I'm in a whole lot of hurt. A lot of days I don't feel it. Doesn't mean it's not true. So God, we thank you for the freedom that exists in our heart. We pray, God, for our nation today. We pray, God, as we celebrate the 4th of July, as we celebrate the birthing of, of our nation and the precious foundational documents, Lord, that were given to us, our Constitution, our Bill of Rights. And Father, we thank you and praise you that your word, Lord, was, was in it all, that there was prayer meetings, Lord, when they were putting this stuff together. They had long, hours-long prayer meetings, night after night after night, seeking your heart, God, before they wrote those words uh, pen those words on those parchments. And God, we thank you and praise you, Lord, that they blazed a trail in their time and their generation. But God, in these last days, you're doing a new work among us. And God, we are thankful for that. So Father, we thank you for the freedom that we have in your Holy Spirit. We pray, God, that you're going to pour out your Holy Ghost on our nation one more time as we seek you for revival. And, and it seems impossible when we look at what is happening all around us. But God, we need to understand that, that in that darkness, Lord, the light of Christ is ever brighter. Hallelujah. So God, open the hearts of those that are lost. Father, we thank you that we are found, but open the minds and the hearts. We pray for the demonic lair over our community in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask in Jesus' name, Lord that your mercy is going to come in great and greater measure. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that churches, as my sister said a few minutes ago, will be activated to a common purpose of sharing and confessing the love and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God, have your way in our lives. Have your way in our homes. Have your way in our church. Have your way even in our community. Have your way in our nation. We ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And amen. Give them a praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Whew, glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Lord, bless the food that we're about to enjoy, those that are able to stay uh, in memory of Bob Seal, God, in the fellowship hall. We thank you and we praise you for this time of fellowship together with Debbie in memory of her husband. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And amen. Praise God. I'm also going to ask Mike and of a few other guys. We took most of the card tables out for the car show. We need a bunch of them in here for the men's group. So I'll need help in a few minutes with that. God bless everybody.